In late September, Swedish and German fighter jets shadowed a Russian IL-20 reconnaissance plane flying over the Baltic Sea without a filed flight plan. The incident highlighted once again the critical role of air power in the defense of Northern Europe. Today, the region relies on two distinct fighter aircraft programs, Sweden's Gripen E and the F-35 operated by Norway, Denmark, and soon Finland. The question naturally arises, which of these aircraft offers greater value for the security of the Nordic region? And are they rivals or complementary tools in the same defensive architecture? To answer that, one must first understand the broader context. Since Finland and Sweden entered NATO, the entire Nordic area has shifted from being a peripheral zone to the front line of the alliance. The proximity to Russia's heavily militarized Kaliningrad enclave and its northern fleet in the Arctic creates constant pressure. Moscow continues to test NATO's readiness with flights, naval patrols, and drone incursions. For the Nordic countries, having reliable and modern fighter fleets is not just about prestige. It is about ensuring both rapid reaction and long-term deterrence. Sweden's Gripen E embodies a philosophy tailored to the country's needs and geography. From the outset, it was designed as an affordable, easy-to-maintain multi-role aircraft. Its greatest strength is its ability to operate from dispersed locations. In fact, Gripens can use road bases as short as 800 meters. This is not a gimmick. In a scenario where Russia might target air bases with long-range missiles, dispersal ensures that the Swedish Air Force can continue fighting even if its main runways are destroyed. Gripen E also brings modern sensors to the table. Its Raven ESA radar provides excellent detection range, while integration with the Meteor Beyond Visual Range missile offers a capability unmatched by many competitors. Meteor's ramjet propulsion allows it to sustain speed at long distances, making it a formidable threat even against advanced Russian aircraft like the Su-35. Gripen can also deploy Iris-T short-range missiles and a wide variety of air-to-ground weapons. The drawbacks are equally clear. Gripen lacks the stealth shaping and sensor fusion of the F-35. Against Russian long-range radar arrays, it would not have the same survivability in high-intensity operations. In many ways, the Gripen reflects a philosophy of guerrilla air power. Remain flexible, scattered, and lethal, but avoid frontal confrontations with the most advanced adversaries. The F-35, by contrast, represents the exact opposite doctrine, dominance through integration. It is a fifth-generation stealth fighter whose greatest strength lies not only in its radar cross-section, but in its ability to function as a flying command post. Its distributed aperture system, electro-optical targeting system, and ESA radar all feed into a sensor fusion network. The pilot does not merely fly the jet. He or she controls a battlefield node capable of sharing data with other aircraft, ships, and ground forces. This networking ability makes the F-35 particularly attractive to NATO. A Norwegian or Danish F-35 does not fight alone. It extends the alliance's collective sensor grid. In a crisis, American, British, and Dutch F-35s could seamlessly integrate with their Nordic counterparts. The price of this is dependence. The F-35's sustainment and software pipelines are controlled primarily by the United States. Moreover, its operational costs are significantly higher than those of the Grapen. It also requires longer runways and advanced infrastructure, factors that could be liabilities in the rugged, icy terrain of northern Scandinavia. Comparing costs illustrates the contrast further. A Grapen E costs around $85 million per unit, and its operating costs remain relatively low. Saab designed it to be maintained with small ground crews in the field. The F-35, meanwhile, ranges between $100 to $120 million per aircraft, depending on the variant and contract. Its long-term sustainment costs have been a recurring complaint, with per-hour flight costs still double those of Gripen. For Sweden, producing Gripens ensures national industrial independence. For Norway, 
Denmark, and Finland, buying the F-35 ties their defense more closely to U.S. supply chains. From a tactical standpoint, the two aircraft are not mutually exclusive. In fact, they complement each other. Imagine a scenario in which Russia escalates tensions in the Baltic and deploys Su-35s or even Su-57s. The Nordic F-35s would be tasked with opening the battle space, using stealth to penetrate radar coverage and neutralize key assets. Meanwhile, dispersed Gripen E squadrons could provide rapid response defense of national airspace, intercepting threats with meteor missiles from austere locations. The F-35 acts as the eyes and brain, while Gripen provides numbers and resilience. This duality extends to deterrence. Russia must calculate late not only against the advanced stealth aircraft integrated into NATO, but also against the swarm-like survivability of Sweden's Gripen fleet. Destroying one element does not cripple the system. For adversaries, uncertainty is the essence of deterrence. Looking toward the future, the Nordic air picture becomes even more interesting. Finland will begin receiving its F-35s in 2026, replacing its F-A-18 Hornets. By the end of this decade, Norway, Denmark, and Finland together will operate over 150 F-35s. Sweden, meanwhile, will deploy at least 60 Gripen EF. This means that within a 500-kilometer radius around the Baltic Sea, NATO will field one of the highest concentrations of modern combat aircraft anywhere in Europe. There are challenges ahead. The cost of sustaining the F-35 fleet will put pressure on defense budgets. Sweden will need to ensure that Gripen E's numbers remain sufficient in the face of growing Russian missile inventories. Interoperability, ensuring Gripen's and F-35s can communicate seamlessly, will also be critical. But the overall trajectory is clear. The Nordic countries are not choosing between the two fighters. They are building a layered, complementary system. In conclusion, the debate should not be framed as Gripen versus F-35. Instead, it is Gripen plus F-35. One aircraft offers resilience, cost-effectiveness, and independence. The other provides stealth, networking, and alliance integration. Together, they create an air power ecosystem greater than the sum of its parts. For Northern Europe, Facing a neighbor that thrives on uncertainty and probing, such a dual approach offers both flexibility and strength. The lesson is timeless. In military planning, diversity is insurance. The Nordic nations have chosen well by fielding both Gripen E and F-35. Their skies will be guarded not by rivalry, but by complementarity. If you found this analysis useful, consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a like, and sharing your thoughts below. Do you see Gripen E as the smarter long-term choice for small nations? Or is the F-35's advanced networking ability simply indispensable in today's NATO environment?